Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Friedman. I'm a chiropractor here at Thompson Healthcare in our Manahawkin location. And uh, today I'm going to be demonstrating a few active release technique protocols for the shoulder. Uh, we're going to be working on the rotator cuff muscles. There's four of them. Uh, there is an active release protocol for every muscle in the body, but today we're just going to focus on these four. Here we have Dr. Mary Kate. She's our physical therapist in our Manahawkin location here. And she's also a former softball player with a history of shoulder problems due to all the, the throwing. So um, first we're going to start out doing some range of motion tests um, to see you know, how her, her uh, range of motion is before we do the treatment and then afterwards. So Mary Kate, I'm just going to have you start with your arm up like this and then I'm just going to have you internally rotate, go all the way down like that as if you were throwing a ball. See how far you can go. Okay? All right. And now we're going to go all the way back as far as you can. Okay. So, full range of motion is 180 degrees between internal and external rotation. And uh, we're probably, so you started here, go all the way back again. We're probably at about 120. Okay, so the first rotator cuff muscle we're going to work on today is called the supraspinatus. It runs right along the top part of the scapula here and attaches to the humerus bone. So, and it's responsible for abduction of the shoulder, that's abduction. So, MK, what we're going to have you do is you're going to start with your palm up like this. And your, your part of this uh, treatment is going to be to take your arm and reach all the way behind your back like if you were going to reach towards your back left pocket. And my thumb is going to be right on the muscle. Okay. Go ahead. Bring your arm back nice and slow. What this should feel like is a good aggressive stretch. Do a couple more of these. Actually, going to treat the other side of the tendon of that muscle on the humerus now. So you're going to do the same exact motion. Okay, go ahead. And last one. Okay, so the next two muscles we're actually going to treat at the same time. So they are called the infraspinatus and the teres minor, and both of them are uh, on the back of back side of the scapula here. The teres minor is a little closer to the armpit, but both of them are responsible for external rotation of the shoulder. Okay, so what we're going to have you do is start with your arm like this, and you're just going to reach out as far as you can and pretend you're dumping out a pretend glass of water. Okay, so start back here, and go ahead. And turn the wrist over. Good. And come back. Last one. Okay, now I'm actually going to have you do two more from this side. Go ahead. And last one. Very good. So the last muscle in the rotator cuff group that we're going to treat is called the subscapularis. This one, we, we've already done external rotation. This one is responsible for internal rotation. So this one is actually on the underside of the scapula bone. So I'm we're just going to make our contact here, and I'm just going to shorten the muscle, and then I'm going to lengthen it to stretch it out. Doing okay? Yep. This is one of our less comfortable protocols, but very effective. Okay, so now we're just going to see how we did and recheck re um, Dr. Mary Kate's range of motion for internal external rotation. Okay, so we're going to do just like we did before with your arm up here. Try to bring your hand all the way down, just rotating from the shoulder. And this is already much farther than we did before. And now external rotation as far back as you can, and we, we've reached a full 180 degrees. So usually after one treatment, the, you notice an immediate improvement in range of motion, but usually for it to stick, it takes uh, multiple treatments. Um, but usually within a few weeks, um, there's very measurable improvements. Mm -hmm.